Hi there, it's me, Teacher Mike from PhuketPals.org. Welcome back to another video. Now, in this one, we're going to have a little bit of a general chat about uh, my educational experiences, where I got to where I am today, and Alex's as well. Yep. Alex? Uh, yeah, about my uh, our school experiences and going through high school and then on to university and how we ended up here, basically. <laughs> okay, so, so is Alex... Tell, tell you know this I suppose the reason we're making this is because a lot of people in terms of the GED test struggle to find uh, motivation yeah whether they be people who are you know they, they've left the education system young and then they, maybe they had a family and, and a, a, you know a, a job and then they find that they want to go back and get a high school diploma or they could be people who were homeschooled and so, and now lack some motivation to, to yeah. get over the finishing line and um, for whatever reason so that's why we're making this. Yeah, just um, about motivation for learning, yeah. I would say. Yeah? How, how did we find our motivation when we were struggling eventually at some points? And uh, um, yeah, how did we get our degrees in the end? Okay, well, go um, ahead. Okay, yeah, so <laughs> um, I started, uh, I would say in general, um, in, for sure in school you have loads of different subjects and uh, you can't be interested in anything or in everything um, so for sure you have your favorites and then subjects you don't really like maybe it's the same problem in GED maybe you are like me I'm more interested in the science part and the math part probably if I would have to take GED I probably have to motivate myself a lot uh, to be able to get my head around the social studies part and uh, the RLA part and for sure the same problems I guess you had as well when you were in school and I think uh, I came I, I managed to, to, to tackle these problems by always trying to find something about a subject that I find interesting although I might find most of it boring or not really interested in it and whenever I found something I was interested in I tried to get to know more about it, I try to learn more about it, get myself uh, more curious and once you, I think you overcome that first lack of motivation and you really find something that interests you, it, you, you get some kind of drive and mm. uh, it drags you a bit in, in the subject and you get more interested and you learn more. Yeah, I, I remember back when I was in high school and I was, I was, I'd only been in high school for a year or so and I hated English class, yeah. believe it or not, at the early stages of, of high school. I just, I just didn't feel like it, I knew what was going on half the time with novel studies and things like that. And then we, did, we started doing a novel called Hard, Hard Times by Charles Dickens. And I kind of took a look at the cover of the book, as you do at that age, and thought, this is going to be awful. Horrible. No, I'm not, you know, I'm not up for this at all. And then once we started reading it as a group, the teacher kind of did like a, like a popcorn read, you know, where one student says a few paragraphs, then the next student, just to keep everyone a bit active in the classroom. And I really, I really liked it. And I remember staying behind after quite a few classes uh, per month and talking to the teacher about this book. And I just found it to be really, really, really fascinating. I had never got that from a good book before you know yeah. like you have good books and bad books this would be deemed in the you know, the, 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 the you know cano canonical or canonical or if you call it history of books as being a, a good book i'd never got that before and uh, i kind of latched on to that and it gave me motivation with to, to kind of progress with english the teacher then started pushing me other novels she thought might have been of interest mm -hmm. as well and uh yeah I, I was definitely helped by that teacher that lack of motivation for English actually turned into my favorite subject, one of my favorite subjects. And uh, I, I was quite lucky in that respect. So like, just like you say, you have to find some element, some, some tiny bit of any subject uh, that you're interested in, and then try and get interested in it, read more about it and expand your knowledge. And hopefully then the rest of the subjects get dragged along in that uh, kind of, um, what would you say, uh, just with that good feeling. And going along with it, and mm. the momentum, yeah, yeah, the momentum, yeah. and yeah, I think every subject. Um, I think it's quite ignorant to say I don't like a subject because if you don't like a subject in the first place, you probably don't know much about it. And whenever you find out more about it, mm. I'm sure everyone will come across something in that subject that might be really interested for interesting for that person. Yeah, and if you go with it, um, yeah, you learn more about it, and it will help you to pass your tests in the end definitely yeah I would you know 
I would, just, just to kind of back up your point there, <laughs> I would be one of those people that says I hate maths. Yeah. And that is because I am glaringly ignorant <laughs> of mathematics. I disposed of that subject as quickly as I could. I passed what I needed to pass. Yeah. And uh, I got rid of it. And that's kind of a lesson, I think, for many GED students. Like, there are four subjects in there, but you don't have to be amazing at all four. No, that's true. You know, as long as, like, let's say the maths is your problem, which yeah. it was for me at high school. Well, many it is, I guess. I just, I did the work to the best of my ability, used, used my teacher to the best of her ability, and uh, just about, just about scraped through and got the pass. And uh, yeah, I uh, disposed of it <laughs> in the bin of history <laughs> from there. But as I say, you have to get through it, and uh, yeah, it's it, the it's same for GED students. Yeah, sure. If, if you find something about it you, you like and you find interesting, definitely, I would definitely recommend to stick to it and uh, dig a little bit deeper. And uh, if you gain some momentum, use that to improve on that subject. If you can't do that, uh, then yeah, just try to spend time learning the basics as much as you can and try to get your pass in. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, so moving on from school and going to university, everything becomes a bit more focused and you, as you said, get rid of and dispose all the subjects you're not really interested in and focus more on certain subjects and I think they're learning about all these new things and definitely more challenging things uh, gets a new aspect of uh, organizing yourself and having to spend much more time on your own investigating um, topics and I really learned how to learn at university um, when I when I sp spent hours after the lecture with my fellow students uh, trying to solve problems our professors gave us and uh, having to look for books in the library or for papers online on Google and uh, reading them yourselves and uh, by that you yeah, I really started to figure out okay how do you actually achieve more knowledge about a certain topic definitely st study skills are something that are often uh, almost forgotten about in many schools I think and uh, it's it's a bit of a, a grand assumption just to think that students will know how to study very often they don't and you know a lot of a lot of students kind of just uh, you know skip through high school doing this that this that learning lists here learning lists there and repeating them in tests but yeah. Some, that you know that's not how you study yeah. and I think you're quite right university is a, is a great uh, kind of teacher of study skills because you you either you either learn how to study or you get thrown out <laughs> and you get a job in Tesco Lotus or whatever it is um, but that's the way it goes for me my story is a little, little bit different to you um, I did a level um, so a levels the the British system yeah um, there we did three or four subjects from 16 to 18 so you're really narrowing down already and we could get into the whether that's a good thing or a bad thing we've talked about that a lot yeah. but that's another video um i was focusing on mainly on politics <coughs> excuse me politics geography and history mainly and it's a level's quite an intense uh, way to study once you go in from, you know, you, you finish GCSE in the British system at 16 and then you go into A-level and you've got this huge jump up there and you're overnight, like you've got two, a two month gap between finishing your GCSEs and then starting A-level and all of a sudden you come back after the summer and then you're being treated like an adult overnight. <laughs> it's really weird, like GCSE, still a kid, everything's spoon fed and yeah. nicely packaged by your teacher and you're still that little, you know. But then you get into A-level and it's like, right, do it if you want. <laughs> you, know, you can go and get a job if you don't do A-level. Uh, very often that, yeah, that yeah. was either explicitly or implicitly stated <laughs> by the teacher in the classroom. Um, so I, you know, I, I had to learn again how to study. You're, you're given maybe, I remember in history class being given like a, a, proper, a proper historical text, you know, by uh, something you get in university. And maybe a 25, 30 page chapter and the teacher would say, okay, um, take notes on that. Yeah. And that's it. That's your class. 
next class you maybe have a debate on that, or you have to write an essay on it for homework, and uh, that's it. But if you get through that, I guess, then you're very, very well prepared for what comes after in university. Yeah. Um, in Germany, it's a bit, a bit different. The educational system I went through is uh, we have our, um, like, when you finish year 10, which is probably an equivalent to the GCSE in England, uh, you go on to uh, the Gymnasium, it's called in Germany, and you make your Abitur, which is the equivalent to the A-level. But there you still have, uh, I think I had about eight different subjects during okay. that time. Um, similar to IB more, I guess. Mm. And with uh, two subjects uh, which were higher level, so you have them a lot during a week, and then two subjects which uh, you are tested in as well, and then other supplementary subjects you have to take on top. So it's still very, very broad. You still can explore many different subjects and topics, uh, but with a focus on some of them. But it's still probably a bit more like in the GCSE, so you have your teacher, it's still a little bit spoon-fed for sure, you're more responsible to study yourself, but you still have your study books and you go through them with your teacher and then uh, you go to university and uh, then it's more like, okay, you're treated like an adult and okay. you have to see yourself how you pass your exams and what study materials you use and how you get on with them. So it's pretty cool. A-level a level is a big is a big kick in the teeth for many students. It's a big kick in the teeth for me. I remember after my actually my first ever, one of my fir my first history class of A level, and I can remember you know I did reasonably well in my GC GCSEs. Came into A level, actually changed school into a grammar school at that time. They still actually they still exist. <laughs> um, and I my first class, I'm not going to say what the teacher's name was, uh, but after the first, I had a, I was a little bit. You've got that, you're 16 and 16 and a bit. You've got that teenage kind of angst or that, you know, touch of the rebel or I know a lot more than I actually do vibe about you. So I remember like the teacher, the teacher seemed a bit stuffy, a bit old. I, you know, I didn't think I'd be able to connect with this guy. And uh, I was sitting near the front of the room because I was a new student to that school. There were only six of us accepted it in the whole year. And, uh, I was kind of drawing on my folder and he was giving a lecture. I wasn't listening that much. And we got, to, I didn't think I did anything wrong, to be honest. We got to the end of the class and the teacher said, wait behind. I said, what? What, I didn't, what have I done? You know, what's the charge? Yeah. Sir. And uh, he said, just wait there. And I couldn't believe it. I, what's this all about? And uh, he, he, he came up to me and he said, we don't want any dead wood in this school. That's <laughs> it. He did. He said, and he said, come with me. And I said, where are we going? He took me to the principal's office. So we actually had to go to the principal's office on the first, first class, day of school, yeah. first <laughs> A-level history class. It, wasn't that, it may not have been the first day, it was okay. the first A-level history class with this, this particular teacher. And we went to the headmaster and he said, yes, he was, he was actually quite cool. I didn't say very much. But it, uh, I had kind of a, a bit of a, what would you say? I wanted revenge against this guy for that. I, my, my ego was hurt. <laughs> Dead wood. Dead piece of wood. <laughs> it was ringing in my ears for a long time. So I actually had the same teacher for A Level Politics as well. There was a bit of a, a crossover of teachers. So uh, I made it my mission. Politics was my preferred A Level. I studied as I've never ever worked as hard in my life, probably since. Um, and I came first in the country. In a, in a level politics and uh, I remember uh, I went to a music festival actually after my A levels and you know got uh, you know had, had that experience as you do and you come back and again you're getting ready for university and you're at that kind of stage of life where you're trying to you're too cool for everything you know and I can remember I borrowed lots of books off this teacher um, for history and politics A level I remember coming back um, just as the new term started, uh, we then left the school. And I remember going back in with all these books and I knocked on the teacher's door. Because in my mind, I still wanted the, a kind of recognition from him that he'd called me the dead yeah, wood. Yeah. Uh, and then I came first in the country. And, and, but he, I don't think he particularly liked me. I don't know why. But anyway, I knocked on the door and he opened the door. He had a class running. And I said, you know, Mr. Whoever, there's your books back. 
And he looked at me and he said, uh, so what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm gonna go to university in Scotland. And he went, okay. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That no was it. recognition at all. You know, I was not even for the first place. <laughs> I was expecting a fanfare, some kind of trumpeted, you know, ex you know, you've now joined the ranks of the elite <laughs> in this department. But uh, I got nothing from him, and uh, I see now he's actually deputy head of the school. <laughs> so there we go. The school will remain nameless. But again, it's just an example for all the, the GED students out there. Like not everyone. I, not that I lacked motivation, um, I probably needed uh, attitude correction a little bit at that age, and that probably oh, held me, me back. For sure. So it, any, anyone, anyone can uh, motivate themselves. Um, you, the worst thing anyone can do is sit at home and think, I can't do I this. I can't do that, yeah. And it, I guess it, the, especially these thoughts start when you, when you just see what you have to accomplish and it's this big mountain of things you have to learn but uh, I think the best way is to chop it up into small bits and just get started on the small bits yeah and go through it step by step and um, yeah especially in, in any point in, in your educational on your educational pathway you have these challenges I guess especially when big exams come up or thesis or um, yeah, yeah, when, yeah, especially with when I when I studied my bachelor's and master's and the master thesis or the bachelor thesis came up and you have uh, this long period of time to finish your 20, 30, 50 page thesis with all your data and evaluation and nice representation and graph statistical analysis and um, for sure in the beginning you think oh, I have so much time and you're procrastinating and you're enjoying your life and then the time is getting shorter and shorter and you see this pile you still have to do and uh, I think this is where most students in the bachelor or master will end up because uh, yeah, it's a time to learn I guess how to how to organize yourself and how to get things done not last minute it's not possible anymore at that point yeah. <laughs> I like the I, I like the metaphor used by Richard Dawkins when he's, he's actually talking about evolution but he uh, you can use that to talk about kind of say reaching your GED goal or reaching your uh, you know university goals he calls it climbing Mount Improbable which I quite like <laughs> and I think you know, from a lot of a lot of GED students have contacted us through the, the the YouTube channel, and they kind of have this. You know, they they kind of, without stating those exact words, they talk about climbing Mount Improbable. They've got, you know, they get jobs to do, they get kids to look after, they get this, that, this, that. How are they supposed to do this? How are they supposed to motivate themselves when all the odds seem stacked against them? Something I advise, actually, and I think this works quite well, uh, is. If you get, like for example, let's say you sit down and you think to yourself, I want to get through my GED. Let's say that's what it is for now. I want to get through my GED, but it seems really hard, or it seems like Mount Improbable, uh, climbing Mount Improbable. Yeah. Then you sit down, you write down, you bullet point all the, well, you, you bullet down all the reasons that you, uh, that you want to pass this. And you also write down all what will happen if you don't. So if you sit and list, the reasons why you want to do it yeah. and then all the reasons why or you know the outcome the possible outcomes, outcomes if you don't do it or, and if you do it well, the possible outcomes as well yeah exactly and that way you know students can kind of get it down on paper see what's you know really get their mind at rest and focused on uh, the the reasons why they want it they're, they're doing it in the first place I think that would that helps a lot of demotivated students kind of get a bit more focused yeah. as opposed to having this kind of scattered uh, brain, you know, like ideas has gone off like popcorn cooking in the microwave, you know. Um, yeah. So, do you have any other any other tips for students to stay motivated? Uh, yeah, I think as I said, try to find something you're interested in and um, focus on that to to get your momentum. And then once you have that, get a little bit into the parts that might not interest you this much um, as well study in chunks don't study for hours or and hours without breaks 
get your mind settled, sit down and study for half an hour, 45 mm -hmm. minutes, take a short break, walk a little bit, get some fresh air, do some exercise. A few somersaults. And <laughs> then uh, get back to the studies for some time. Yeah, I talked about this on the last video I did actually about, um, I'm, I'm quite, quite into the guy, I don't know if you know him, uh, the podcaster called Tim Ferriss. No. He's a kind of, uh, what would you describe Tim Ferriss as? He became famous for, well, he's, I think it was, was it Jiu-Jitsu? What do you call it? Jiu-Jitsu? What do you call it? The martial art? Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah. Jiu-Jitsu. I think it was Jiu-Jitsu. I, I think he said, I think he famously stated that he was going to become some kind of champion at this, but he'd never done it before. And then he just started training like a madman <laughs> and became the champion. And that, that's how he became famous. Okay. I think that's right. But this guy, he has, he's kind of like a bit of a self-help element to him. He's a fitness element to him. Um, he's got lots of good ideas for motivation. He's incredibly well read and he's got lots of good books. Most famously, The 4-Hour Workweek, okay. where he out outlines you know, how you can actually work for four hours a week. And uh, as long as you've got passive income, as long as you're working towards passive income streams, you can, you can do that. It's a cool concept. Yeah. Um, why am I talking with him again? Study tips. Study, yes. He talks about, um, I th he talks about doing like 20 minute study blasts. Of course it's different for every single person. Yeah. Some people can do more, but I find, for me, I find 20 minutes, then a five minute break is good. And in that five minute break, I will do some breathing exercises or I'll get up and walk around and try and do some breathing exercises. For me, the breathing exercises are really important because my mind just goes in a million directions, usually towards music. <laughs> if I've, you start thinking about live gigs I've seen and tunes going around in my head. Drift, drift off after a while. Yeah. Unbelievable. So the 20 minutes for the five minute break works for me. But of course, for anyone who's watching this video, maybe you know you work you can concentrate a bit more than that, but there's no point overdoing it. Yeah. And another tip I, I, I have is, uh, don't forget you're not alone in this. So whenever you struggle with understanding a concept or yeah, just not being able to get to wrap your hand around something about social studies, math or science, whatever it is, uh, you can go online or ask friends about it, uh, you know, that have passed the GED already and uh, get yourself into a good learning environment and community of people and uh, home pages, websites that can help you. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, there's, there's no, there's a, there's really no, no excuse to be uh, alone or atomized, I suppose, in the world these days because <laughs> we're only, everything's such a click, a, a click away. Um, okay, so that's cool. Um, when, let me just see, when I went to university, um, like yourself, that, well, I was, I'd already learned those how to study skills from A-level. Um, I find myself, though, I, I let off the gas, as the Yanks say, as the Americans say a little bit at university, because I'd worked so hard at A-level, I find that there's so much overlap in the first few years that, and also, I was buzzing. After my A level, so I, I I learned an important lesson. Actually, I became I think I became a little bit complacent. I wouldn't say I was arrogant after my A levels A level grades, but I definitely I definitely uh, became a little bit complacent with study. I kind of thought I'd reached the peak. Yeah, probably did. Know everything. <laughs> <laughs> so at university, I kind of I didn't work as hard as I I especially the first year and a half. I kind of drifted very much into socialize mode shall we say that could be a euphemism for whatever you want <laughs> but uh yeah the, very much into the social scene live music uh into things like stand-up comedy um art you know going to see art exhibitions all sorts of stuff like uh stand-up stand-up poetry uh loads of stuff anything that kind of i studied enough just to get by yeah. But then what I found was, what I, this was interesting because I, I found that a lot of students I started studying with at first year of university in my particular course, I, fe I felt that at that time I felt I was quite a bit ahead of some of them, like even in my tutorial groups. Yeah, like, they caught up. Then. Exactly. <laughs> like after the first year or so, year and a half of doing the absolute bare minimum, as I did, they definitely caught up and then started going past and that freaked me out and that kind of spurred me on a little bit to start working hard again. Yeah. 
And I think we all kind of need that, uh, you know, that kind of kick up the behind. Yeah. Sometimes. I think uh, and the other, for, for me in university, I think the, the really, really, why, why I was lucky in university is uh, the, my, my friends I met at that time. And um, not only in university and studying together, but it's for sure like starting to explore the world and you're a young adult and you yeah, go to festivals, concerts, whatever. With uh, But we, we all, we had like this group of 10 to 20 people or friends found that found each other in the in the bachelor studies of biology and we studied together a lot as well and that group helped all of us so much in, in uh, getting through the bachelor and achieving our goals there mm -hmm. just uh, working together and one being an expert more in statistics another mm -hmm. being an expert more in physiology another in evolution and uh, everybody having their small favorites and being able to help the others to improve in these topics as well. Okay. And uh, so if you have friends that have to pass the GED as well, get together with them, get into small study groups of a couple of uh, four, five, six people and uh, you will improve much faster, I think. Yeah, I think it, it's very difficult for people to study completely isolated from everyone else. Um, when it's because you, I think well, this is just personally speaking, you need that kind of push of peer pressure. Yeah. Because that if you're good. if you're on your own and you're studying, it's if there's no no kind of real urgency sometimes. But if you're with a friend and let's say you have to do, you let's say you're studying GED social studies and one one of you decides to study uh, the Revolutionary War, the other decides to study the Civil War. Well, you might come say, let's meet tomorrow and talk about our respective topics. Well, then you've got this onus, you've got a push yeah. to make it happen. But if you're just saying, right, I'll study on my own today, I'll do that, and then I'll have a think about it in the morning over coffee. It's not, well, it might happen, but it's not going to have, it doesn't reverberate in the same yeah. way as that kind of human face-to-face uh, -face contact makes it do so, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, not everyone has that luxury though. Sure. You know? Sure. But uh, it's definitely a good thing. Okay. Well, All right. Is that about it? I think so. Okay, so again, if you've made it this far in the video, <laughs> if anyone has ever made it this far in the video, we, we applaud you to the heavens, don't we? Uh, so if you find this in any way useful and you'd like to see more of this type of stuff, um, just let us know. Subscribe. Hit the notification and we'll be more than happy to keep doing it. We're going to do a video every week of uh, Alex, Alex and uh, me having a good old waffle about all topics in the world. If there's any topics you'd like to hear us talking about in terms of personal development, in terms of education, um, in terms of study techniques, in terms of anything at all, we're happy to uh, put our heads together and uh, share our, Get our experience. For you, yeah. Okay, so that's about it. Um, Thank you very much and yep, have a good day. You. See you soon.